I want to start with really playing you um, something that our, our listeners, they, they, they're a wonderful group of people. You are a wonderful group of people. You leave us voice memos. You write us emails with questions and thoughts all the time. And so let's just play a little something about information overload that they sent us. When we wake up in the morning, there's this endless loop of personal emails, text messages, voicemails, work emails, work meetings. My question is about focus and how technology is affecting it. A direct messages, status updates, friend requests from Twitter, Facebook. Do we get stuck in the loop of just browsing at things that make us feel good or look nice, and then we become so overwhelmed with all of the ideas that we just don't do it? What does that do? LinkedIn, Instagram, etc. <laughs> Each medium forces us to review, make a decision, keep, delete, reply, and move to the next request. When you finally reach that one day when you feel like you've conquered managing all of your cues, the feeling short-lived when you fall behind tomorrow. Any help or suggestions or best practices? Any help or suggestions? <laughs> well, we didn't have any yet, so we were like, well, let's see if we can find some. So after hearing all these messages that we were getting, we're like, let's, let's go a little further here. So we did a survey earlier this month, and about 2,000 listeners responded. Um, and we really wanted to pinpoint how do we define information overload? What does it mean to people? And when exactly does it happen for people? Here are some of the words that turned up the most. Um, you can see FOMO's in there, up to date, social media, interesting, not wanting to miss. There's a real mix of good and bad. I think in this group of, of words, you can see that there's sort of an ambivalence, right, about the wonders and delights of all the wonderful things in the digital world, but also this feeling of anxiety that often gets served up alongside of it. Nearly 80% of our listeners who responded said that they often continue consuming information despite feeling that they have reached information overload. They just keep going tapping, scrolling, swiping, and we ask them why they think they keep going. Here were a few of the answers. I don't want to miss something that will inspire me. I feel a need to always stay up to date so I'm not embarrassed if it comes up in conversation. <laughs> I'm somehow deeply convinced that I should be able to accomplish more in a day than I would ever expect of any other person. Um, that final one really resonates with me. Um, and I think this makes sense, right? Like who doesn't want to be inspired or come across as really smart or be their most productive self? I, I want all those things. I see you nodding. <laughs> but when I describe this sensation, right, of wanting to consume more information, more articles, more pictures of couches on Pinterest, um, <laughs> despite feeling, really feeling like my brain was full, consumer psychologist Demetrius Zavirikos gave me this diagnosis. Yep, a contemporary modern digital junkie. Yeah, don't laugh too hard, because there are a lot of us. We see that very, very often among people who live in urban areas, um, in bigger cities, that they are, you know, they're, they're sort of, they're, they're starving for information, they're craving information, because they feel that that level of information will actually make them better informed. They're keeping up, you know, with friends and family, we're keeping up because they want to be educated. In reality, what a digital junkie is actually doing is overindulging information, and information that's not actually being stored or, or, or sort of, you know, said in a meaningful way that can actually mean something and contribute to their level of, you know, general knowledge. So more information, it doesn't always make us better informed. In fact, Dimitrios estimates, and it, the, the research is very preliminary, but between 40 to 50% of the stuff we take in just goes out the door. So I wanted to know, why do we feel this disconnect? And it turns out there are very good reasons why we feel the disconnect between what we want and what we're actually capable of consuming. And here's what neuroscientist Daniel Levitin told me using email as an example. There's a certain number of decisions you can make before you deplete the brain's capacity for making good decisions. Uh, so do I read this one now or later? Uh, do I reply to it? Do I forward it to someone else? Do I mark it as spam? Uh, do I need to gather more information before I can reply? That's five decisions right there, and that's one email, and you haven't even dealt with it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so our brains feel maxed out. And yet we tell ourselves, and society tells us, keep going. You can do it. You can watch all those great Netflix shows, right? You can stay up to, debt, up to date. Just don't miss out. There's so many wonderful things. Anthropologist Genevieve Bell, she's a fascinating woman, she told me that 
families, communities, entire countries are in the midst of working out cultural norms about their relationship to technology. She really thinks that we are at an important crossroads and she compares it to like when people first fall in love and they can think of nothing else. We're having that moment with the technology, right? Like we have fallen in love with it and it is all consuming, but there will be a moment when we need to put out the trash, go do the laundry, go talk to someone else. And I think where that moment fits and what the choices are we make at that moment will be really telling. So there's also a piece that says, how do you start to decide what the most useful things are that this technology does? That last sentence, how do you decide what the most useful thing is that this technology does? I mean, shouldn't we be starting to ask that question like right now? I think we should, I think we should do it. I mean, what are we waiting for, right? Which brings us to InfoMagical. How can we turn our information overload from something that feels kind of draining into something magical? We're gonna try <laughs> with a week of challenges starting February 1st. When you sign up, you are going to be prompted to decide on an information priority for the week. You can call it a goal. Scientists call it a theme or a schema. We decided to go with emoji. Because <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> so we've identified five goals, right? So all the information you consume during challenge week, you want it to get you closer to that goal to put it towards a purpose. So let's try it, okay? So finish this sentence. I want all the information I consume the first week of February to make me be more creative. That's mine. Anybody else more creative? I want you to know that I designed the person with the rainbow lasers coming out of their <laughs> eyes. I win. Do you, who wants to be more knowledgeable about a certain topic or skill? Like something you've really been meaning to learn about. You're like, why, why do I still speak Spanish so badly? <laughs> okay, good. Who wants to be more up to date on the news? If I see anyone from the newsroom here raising their hand, that will be very worrying. Anybody more up to date on the news? They're like, really, what is the difference between Shia and Shiite? <laughs> nobody, nobody, interesting crowd. Okay, <laughs> who wants to be more in touch with family and friends? Yeah, don't feel guilty. Oh, you do? That's my husband. Wow. <laughs> That's a sign. Okay. And who wants to be more in tune with yourself? Anybody recognize John Draper there? Zenning out? Nice. Love it. Okay. So, <laughs> you just threw me off completely, my husband looking at me. So, it's up to you, right? I mean, I think you really need to listen to your gut, right? What is the thing that you want to achieve? with all the wonderful information that you take in. Each goal has this special emoji that we've specially designed. We're so excited about the emoji, it's like ridiculous. And we're actually gonna give you this emoji to share with people, which is super exciting too. And then during InfoMagical Week, every single day you're gonna get a new challenge, a behavior modification that is going to see if it can help you focus, if you can help you get a little bit more magical. Each day we're gonna tackle something different, a magical day, a magical brain, a magical phone, a magical connection, and yes, a magical life, God damn it, because we are reaching for the stars. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into what exactly you're gonna do every day, not because I don't think you wouldn't sign up, but I think like in the spirit of InfoMagical, that's quite enough information right now. But I really hope that you'll join us and um, sign up for Challenge Week. And in fact, we just got word that our site went live, so, Will you be our guinea pigs? Um, John Keefe and his team, he's chief of the head of the data news team at WNYC. They have been working so hard. All of them are here to help you figure it out. We really need you to beta test it <laughs> to make sure it actually works before we launch on Monday. So um, you guys raise your hands. Let's take just a minute, take out your phone. Just like, just test to make sure it works. Would you, for me? Um, I love that you guys had your phones like in your bags. This is a very like cool audience that actually listens. Just see if it works. Like if you like get it to pop up, raise your hand just so like we know it's all happening in there. John, is it working? Yeah, is it working? Yeah. Yeah? Oh yes. Okay, good. It's working. So if you're so inspired, I totally get if you're not ready to sign up yet because this is a big deal. I'm going to continue con to convince you throughout the evening. But if you're feeling like you're in the mood, 
When you sign up, you can sign up either to do it via email or via text. This is really exciting. This is another thing that we've been working with John to create. If you sign up via text, you're going to be part of our data set. Every day during that first week of February, we're going to text you. Not a lot, we promise. Just a few times a day. And the idea is that we're going to be checking in with you to see how it's going. So you can text us back, which is so cool. And we're going to be reading your texts. And we're going to really try and measure what effect does setting an information goal have on information overload. Can we change this in some way? We don't know what's going to happen yet. That's why it's so exciting. But I will say we got some fascinating results from our project that we did a year ago. It was called the Bored and Brilliant Project. 20,000 people shared their data with us that time. And um, we learned some really interesting things. So I just want to share with you our hypothesis this time. We think that when you purposefully choose what you want to focus on, the right information, that's when the magic will happen. And like we're defining magic pretty loosely here. It could be learning how to order from the menu in a restaurant that you go to all the time in the native language. That'd be pretty cool, right? It could be getting back in touch with Uncle Philip, because things got weird a couple years ago, <laughs> you know? And maybe it's time to let bygones be bygones. Or maybe you just want to relax and enjoy life a, minimal, a little more. I think that's acceptable, too. Whatever makes you feel magical. And I just want to share with you how technologist Katerina Fake thinks you'll know when you have found your magic. I think one of the things that you feel in an information-saturated environment is that you're gradually trading off full years of your life in exchange for entertainment, trivia, and other meaningless aspects. And that when you can be conscious and aware of the magical moments, these singular moments of your life where none of those distractions are impeding your sense of yourself and who you are in your life and where you are and the people around you and the world that you live in, it's a really wonderful thing. Maybe you're thinking of a moment right now that you felt that way. It's not meaningless. It's really, truly magical.